Hey guys, in this tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a wipe effect like this, yeah, in the Spaghi R Studio for your Instagram filters. So let's go. Hey again, so let's create this wipe filter here in the Spaghi R Studio. So as you have seen in the preview, we want a black and white overlay and when we wipe with our hand, here, then yeah, the black and white overlay disappears on the parts we wiped with our hand and the normal pictures picture is showing up. So yeah, at first we will create the black and white filter here for this effect. So I will use um, yeah, a LUT from the Spark AR library, but of course you can use any LUT you want to use for this filter. So yeah, I go here to the left hand side to the asset library, then I go to the um, <clears throat> color LUTs and here I just search for a black and white um, color LUTs here. Um, yeah, I will go, go with the blown out black and white filter here. So just yeah, click on it and then click on import free. So after the download is done, you will find this um, yeah, color LUTs here in your assets bundle. Now just drag and drop it into your patch editor. The next step is of course to extract our camera texture from the camera object in the scene. So we go to our left hand side to our scene panel, here we select the camera, then we go to the right hand side and here we click on texture extraction at the little plus next to it. So after this is done, um, yeah, we can also drag and drop our camera texture into the patch editor. And then we can connect the RGBA output of the camera texture with the texture input of the color LUT shader. Now we need of course a material we can connect the output of the color LUT shader to. So for this we go to our assets bundle, click on the plus and here we create a material. I will call this material overlay. Then I select my material, go to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat. Now I go down to diffuse and click on the little arrow next to texture. So now we have a new patch, a yellow patch in our patch editor and now we can connect the output of the patch editor with the imp input of the diffuse texture patch. So now we can't see any overlay here but we will do this now. So for this we go to our scene click on, on this to the scene panel, click on the plus and here we search for rectangle and yeah, insert it. So now we can see this little rectangle on the left upper corner. Now we select the rectangle in our scene panel, go to the right hand side and set the width and the height to fill width and to fill height. So now everything is filled. Now we can go down to the material and then we select our overlay material for the rectangle and now we can already see that yeah, our filter here is black and white but I can wipe now but nothing is happening so we will change this now. So you will already have guessed that we need a hand tracker to achieve this filter. So for this we go to our scene, click on the plus again and here we search for hand tracker. So. Now our hand tracker is inserted in the scene and the next step is that we drag and drop the yellow hand tracker object from the scene to our patch editor. When we have done this we will find these new three patches here. Our hand finder, hand select and our hand tracker zero. So now it's, yeah, it's getting a little bit tricky because we have to create a few patches and we also have to work with an emitter to achieve this filter. So the next step is that we um, yeah, create an emitter object. For this we go again to our scene, click on the plus and here we search for a particle system. Yeah, or always say emitter, but yeah, it's a particle system. So yeah, just click on it and then click on insert. But in the scene, the particle system is called emitter. So now we have this emitter in the middle of our screen. So we have to do a few changes here at the emitter settings. So yeah, just click on it, go to the right hand side and yeah, um, go down to the emitter and set the birth rate to, yeah, now to one. We will do this later in the patch editor, then set the speed to zero and also the percentage next to speed to zero. So 
And now we also need a patch from our assets library. So we go to the asset library and here we search for projection. Hit enter and then you will find this um, yeah, texture projection patch. Just click on it and then click on import free. So after the download is done, you will find this texture UV projection patch in your patch editor. Uh, in your assets panel. So now just drag and drop this also to your patch editor and you will find this orange patch in your patch editor. So the input texture for this texture UV, UV projection is the RGBA output of our camera texture. So and here we also need a new material of course. So we go to our assets panel, click on the plus and create a new material. I will call this material emitter so we know this is for the emitter then we also go to the right hand side and set the shader type to flat now go down to diffuse and here also click on the little arrow next to texture so now just connect the texture uv protection the output of it to the diffuse texture input of the emitter so now we can select the emitter and then yeah go down to the material settings click on the plus next to it and here select the ma uh, emitter material and now we can already see that yeah at the emitter when it's blinking and we see the original picture so we go up a little and to make this more visible we set the scale of our particle to let's say yeah 0 0.05 so now it is bigger and you can see this better and they also set the perf rate to 10 to see this better so it's not blinking anymore and yeah now we need this to move with our hand um yeah to make this special effect happen so but we will do a little change in our emitter first so we go down at the emitter settings and then we will set the shape to sphere to make this more realistic because a square is not that um, natural so yeah let's go and move on with the programming here in our patch editor because we can't just move the um, emitter in our hand tracker because when we do this it would be a nice idea but when our hand is out of um, out of the screen um, yeah it is not here anymore so I will set the um, lifespan of the particles to 10 seconds so now when I go out with my hand, the emitter is disappearing and when I come back, it is yeah here. So yeah, this is not what we want, but it's already working as we want it here on the screen. But yeah, as when the hand goes out, the emitter is disappearing and the effect is gone. So we will um, yeah do the take the emitter out of the hand tracker. So just drag and drop it out of it. And now we will do it. So it won't disappear um, when we move the hand out here of our um, yeah, screen. So let's follow along and create some patches with me. So the first patch we have to create is a hand bounding box um, yeah, patch. So just search for it, hand bounding box here in the, in the patches and click on add patch. So now we go to our hand finder and hand select. We can delete this hand tracker batch and now we just connect the output, the hand output of the hand select with the hand input of the hand bounding box. So the next patch we have to create is a bounding box to the unbacked patch. So we also create this patch and just click on add patch. So now we connect the hand bounding box output um, from the hand bounding box patch to the bounding box input of this new patch. So now we need a unpack patch. So we can um, yeah, unpack our center value here. So then the next step is that we drag and drop our device object from the scene into our patch editor. So now we have our device object here and here we need a divide patch that we have the screen size um, of every phone model. So every phone is different with the screen size, so we need to do this. So we 
connect the screen size to the first input of the divide patch and the screen scale to the second input of this divide patch. So the next thing is that we need another unpack patch. Also set this from vector 3 to vector 2 because we just have two vectors here because it's just a yeah, 2D, um, um, yeah. 2D value, so just connect the output of the divide patch to the unpack patch here. So now we need um, two another divide patches. So just create one and now just copy and paste it. So we have two of them. So the X output of the unpack patch goes to the first divide patch and the Y output goes to the second divide patch. So now we can set the um, value of the second um, value to 2 for both divide patches. So the next step is that we need a uh, subtract patch, two of them of course, so we select um, create one and then another one just with copy and paste and now we connect the X from this unback patch from what with the pounding box input, the X to the first and the Y to the second. So then we go up to this, to the another T white patches, and here the first, the X string goes to the first subtract patch, and the Y string here goes to the yeah, second subtract patch. So now we need a multiply patch to mirror the axis. So minus one. Um, yeah this and now we need a pack patch. So now we connect the, this X path to the first input and the Y patch, uh, the Y path to the second input. So in the third one it's empty. So now we go to our scene and select our emitter object. Then go to the right hand side and here at transformations you can um, extract the position to the patch editor. So just click on the little arrow next to position and you will find this um, yeah, yellow 3D position patch for the emitter. And now just connect this um, output with the 3D position input. But now there is one finer important step because now when we yeah, move our hand in front of the camera, nothing happens. So we have to go to our scene and drag and drop our emitter into our canvas object. And now we can see um, the effect here in the middle, just restart the filter and now it should work. So and now when the hand goes out of the frame, the effect is still visible. So yeah, this is pretty nice. Make sure that you set the, um, lifespan of the um, particles to a higher value to, as you can see here they are yeah disappearing after a few few seconds but if you want it you can leave it like that for sure but yeah just select the emitter go to the um, particle settings and set the lifespan to let's say 100 seconds so but now when we restart our filter we have this um, here appearing at the left upper corner, we don't want this because when there is no hand in the frame which the camera can detect, um, the yeah, first value is this and we don't want this. So um, yeah, we will do a little workaround here. Um, yeah, we go here to our hand select, so our hand finder, and here we have the count output. Now we need a greater than patch because when it is greater than zero, when the camera detects more than um, zero hands, um, yeah, it should do something. So after the greater than, we need a if then else patch. And here when the condition is true, so when a hand is in the frame, then set, it, set the birth rate to, yeah, let's say 300 and else leave it to zero. So now we just need our birth rate into our patch editor for this, we go to our emitter in the scene, go to the right hand side and here we extract the birth rate value to our patch editor with the yellow yeah, arrow next to it. Just click on it and then just connect the output of the if then else patch 
with the birth rate input of the emitter. And now when you restart the filter, yeah, this isn't a thing anymore. And yeah, you can use this filter. So swipe with your hand over it. Um, the higher the birth rate is, the, um, the smoother is the effect. And of course you can play around with the size of the emitter. At the moment it is pretty big. So just select the emitter in the scene, go to the right hand side. And here, for example, set the scale of the particle to 0.02. Now it's a lot smaller and you can yeah, use this effect. So yeah, just play around with the settings. I hope this video was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, it would be really nice when you subscribe to it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.